All right, today we are continuing our journey to get the dolls those burgers, and I thought, what are burgers without some toppings? So we're making some dispensers for mayonnaise, ketchup, and mustard for the dolls to use with those burgers. Stay tuned and see how really simple, inexpensive, and quick these are to make. All right, so this is gonna be a fun little project. First, we're gonna start out with a bamboo skewer, like one of these, and we're gonna cut it down. So the first thing we're going to do, we're gonna make the tip with a pencil sharpener. Just like sharpening a pencil. Since they're made of bamboo, the little stringy bits come off sometimes. Now I need to find my ruler right here. And I need to measure down two and a half inches from the tip. I don't see my pencil. Here's a pen. Here's a better pen. Okay, we're gonna cut this two and a half inches long. And you can use whatever tool you are most comfortable with for cutting, as long as it's something safe. In other words, don't use scissors to cut this. This tool is called an Ultimate Easy Cutter, and it's my favorite wood cutting tool that I own. I use it all the time. The next thing we need are some strips of just regular, there's my pencil, just regular printer paper or typing paper. We need one strip that's the length of the paper that's two and one eighth inches wide, and then we need four of them that are two inches wide by the length of the paper. We need some Mod Podge or other glue that's compatible with paper and not too thick, and we need a brush to apply it. And we are going to start with our wider piece of paper, our two and one eighth inch paper. We're going to get the end kind of coated with Mod Podge. And we got a tile here to work against so I don't get Mod Podge all over and I've got my table protected by a piece of parchment paper. Now, if you've ever made wooden beads, this is very similar to that. Line this up, and you first, when you start, it's what's really critical that you get started straight and stay going straight. We're lining up our paper, the long edge of our paper with the flat end of our skewer. The little tip is sticking out. And start rolling. You want to try and get this fairly tight. They're going to look better if they do not have a bunch of space in them. And if you hear that in the background, that's our new kitten. He's crying. The moment I sat down, I think he decided it was time to be held. We've only had him a couple of days, so he's still really tiny and really young. And I'm going to continue rolling. I don't pit, put Mod Podge in the entire paper. I tried that on one and I found it was just a little too hard to control. Try and keep this roll of paper going pretty straight. I'm detouring a little bit here trying to keep track of the camera and everything going on. Just keep rolling tight, adding Mod Podge from time to time and definitely add a nice coat of Mod Podge at the ends, both the beginning and the starting and the ending ends of the um, each strip of paper. I kind of like to use my thumb to keep that nice and straight. Now after the one strip of two and an eighth inch 
is on, we are going to start with our two inch strips. And we are going to start painting Mod Podge on the end. Again, lining up the flat end of our bottle with the long edge of the paper. We want that eighth inch sticking out there. We'll make more sense here in a little bit. And if your skewer stick is not held securely, that's okay. We can fix that at the end. My paper is trying to go crooked. And if you have a few wrinkles, it's okay to have a few wrinkles inside as long as you smush them as tight as possible. I like to keep one thumb, my thumb on the end here and my finger on the tip and try and keep this going nice and straight. One Mod Podge at the end. So I'm going to continue this with the other three two inch wide strips. And when I get those rolled on, I will come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, when you get the, all the strips on, then kind of roll it between your hands. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Get it as level as you can. I kind of use my fingers, my thumbnails mainly to push that down. I got a little wrinkle there, but we'll just have to have that there. Hopefully it won't show too much when everything's painted. Then we're going to coat the whole thing with another nice coat of Mod Podge. Just paying particular attention to where your strip of paper ended. If this is too noticeable, I might put another layer of paper on, but I'll probably just leave it. So that all needs to dry, and since we've got quite a few layers of paper with a lot of Mod Podge in there, this is going to need a few hours to get dry because we want it all the way dry before we paint. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll go on to our next step. All right, now I've let these dry overnight because I wanted them to be completely dry and they've got a nice finish to them. They're still really rough up here. So I'm going to take an emery board and I'm going to work on this part for a while. I'm going to sand this down until it's nice and smooth. Work a little bit on the bottom too to get it nice and smooth and when those are smooth I'll come back and we'll start painting. Alright, I've spent a little time sanding the tops and the bottoms. Quite frankly, in all truth, if I wasn't doing a video I would have spent more time sanding these off and making them smoother, especially on the top, and I would have probably filled the top, but I need to get the video done in order to get it up on time. So if you've got the time, go ahead and work on these a little longer. If not, you know, whatever. So I've got three, and I've got three colors of paint. One will be painted with a light ivory. One will be painted with tomato spice, which is probably my most used red when it comes to doll food. I love that color. And the third one will be Empire Gold. I'm only going to paint one on camera. Now, this is going to get messy. So I recommend having some wet wipes next to you. Let's start with this Empire Gold. One of the beauties of working with a ceramic tile at your side is you can just put the paint out there. It works as a palette. It works as a work surface. When I'm all done, I just take a paint scraper and scrape it clean. And it's just a matter of painting. Whether you do the bottoms or not is up to you. But I think we all know how to paint. Be sure and clean your brushes out between times. Uh, since I am going to be coming back to this though and doing a second coat, I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to get this done. My paint will actually stay workable on this tile for a while. The very top will form a skin but I'll have workable paint underneath for a while. So, 
Another reason for having wet wipes here. Rather than wash this brush out every time between coats, because I'm going to have to put two or three coats on. Oh, wet wipe's a little wetter. This one was the top one. It's not quite as wet. Take a wet wipe. Fold it over your paintbrush. And you can hold your paintbrush this way for a couple of hours. Not, not you know, over a long period of time, but for typical coming back to repaint, put a second coat on, that will keep your paintbrush workable and you won't waste the paint that's already in the brush. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to start putting coats of paint on the other two, one in obviously red, one in white. When they are all completely coated, I will come back and we'll talk about the next step and I'll let you know how many coats it took for me this time. All right, so I've got two coats of paint on and I think they look just fine. I'm going to leave them at two coats. Oh, I've got a little spot there that didn't coat though. Let me fix that. There. Now I'll leave them at two coats. I'll let that dry a few seconds before I put a clear finish on. Now these need to be coated in a clear finish since craft paint is a matte finish and we want something a little more satiny looking and we want to seal this a little bit. I am going to use a spray finish because it will set up faster and I just prefer the look of a spray finish but you could use any of the Mod Podge products if you want to whatever you're most comfortable using for clear finish be sure and wash these brushes out now that we're done that's going to be the next thing I do when these are coated in their clear finish and all dry I'll come back and we'll look at the finished product okay here are our completed condiment dispensers. They have their spray finish on and they're all dry. So they've got a slight sheen to them. I used a gloss spray coat, by the way. Um, I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, be sure and check the blog post. There'll be some photos there, some additional photos and higher quality photos than what I can put onto the uh, video. If you haven't found my Facebook group, be sure and find that because the link is in the description box. And even when I share photos on other Facebook doll groups, I put more on my group usually. So you're missing things if you aren't looking there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you later. Bye.